and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. It's me, your favourite Adidas whiskey reviewer. And today, we talk about one of the greatest finds, excuse me, I've ever had in single cask whiskey. Apologies, that was probably quite loud. Last week we did the 12 year old Glen Lossy in First Fill Bourbon. And this week we have a 19 year old cask strength Glen Geary that they called the Chilled Toddy. Uh, this is Society Cask number 19. Distillery 19 is Glengarry. It's Cask 90, 90. A 192 bottles, 54% ABV, first fill bourbon. Um, and you can tell with the older bottles, they have uh, black labels. Whereas the younger ones, because I've got the bottle here, have white labels. So if you ever see uh, one of these bottles on a back bar, it's got a black label, it's probably a lot older. <clears throat> I don't need to talk to all of you about how much I love Glengarry. Um, it's been a little bit of a late love affair, I will say. Tried it many years ago, loved it, kind of forgot about it as I dived deep into bourbon and peated whiskey and um, New World whiskey for a while, that really occupied me. And then you get back into single cast and you become a Messon Bigress member and you're like, well, what do you have? Um, but yeah, I even though it's called Chilled Toddy, they had two 19-year-old Glengarry's on the website at the same time. And the tasting notes on this one were what actually brought me to orientate towards this. Um, but I'm not typically a fan of toddies as a drink. Um, they just don't do it for me. So the fact I've gone for this is a little bit unusual. Um, but Glengarry, even in its standard bottling, for those of you that don't know, is typically a 48% ABV, natural colour, non-filtered single malt. It's owned by a very large company, and even though they've just put a lot of money into a visitor center refurb and stuff, they don't really seem to put a lot of focus on Glengarry, uh, which I'm kind of happy about, because it means I can still get the 12-year-old quite regularly for £50 a bottle, um, and I don't have to worry about the price increasing. Their own single cast stuff and their older whiskies are very expensive, I will say, um, but they are a relatively small distillery. I think we're talking now, but of a about two and a half to three million liters. It's really not a lot. It could even be less than that. Nonetheless, it's in the glass. And I haven't tried this again for a while, much like the Glen Lossy. So I'm intrigued to know if this has become any more Glen ish In color wise, it's actually lighter than the Glen Lossy from what is probably last week at this point. Um, it doesn't have that kind of deeper, almost green tang that the Glen Lossy had to it. This is very clear. Um, I don't mind that. It's fine. Oh my god. Glen Geary always reminds me of two things. Those things are milk chocolate and hazelnut. And this is just it. Imagine if Ferrero Rocher wanted a whiskey. Just smells like Glen Geary. I can see where they got the toddy thing from because there are some honey lemony notes kicking around in it. And I'll be honest, lemon and citrus isn't something I always orientate towards when I smell Glengarry. It's always kind of heavier, richer, earthier flavors. But the milk chocolate and the nut notes on this are just outrageous. It's like, opening a bar of hazelnut milk chocolate. The other interesting thing with this, and something which I do get with Glengarry quite a lot, is this very candle waxy kind of thing. Um, when I use the word waxy, take a client leash out of the argument, this is a totally different style of that. It is that kind of hot, wax smell. You know, any of you who've ever burnt a candle at home will know what I'm talking about. But just that kind of warm aroma that it kind of gives off. It's very difficult to explain apart from using the word waxy. But if you say that word, people automatically think Lionation. With this, I don't think that's the case. There is some very fragrant stuff in it too. There's almost like a fresh lily, very floral element to it. 19 years old in first fill bourbon. Whiskey drinkers, this is what I'm after. You can keep your sherry casks and your port casks. Honestly, just give me old Highland whiskey 
in first fill bourbon. And I am take all of my money. Let's taste it. This is the best chair to drink this whiskey. Oddly enough, it is only the finish where you could probably say this might be a Glengarry. The upfront arrival is some of the oiliest, richest textured liquid, whiskey specifically, that I've ever come across in my life. You don't have to be an expert at picking out single casks to know that that was an incredible cask of whiskey. My mouth is salivating as I'm talking to you, so I'll try and rein that in. We get these big chocolate notes up front. There's all of that hazelnut, there's walnut, there's all of these nice earthy, oily, soft, nutty flavours. There's even a little bit of peanut, which repeats again at the end. The warmth and the toastiness of the oak and like, I've been lucky enough to try some incredible single cast whiskies, both personally and professionally. This is one of the best single cast whiskies that I've ever tried. Um, fair play to SMWS. I think if they bring out any Glengarry ever, I'm just gonna buy it. Oddly enough though, on some of those whiskies that I've been privileged enough to try, a fair few of them have been Glengarry, and a lot of them have been 12 all the way through to 25, 30 year old casks. And the one thing that the bourbon ones have always had is this really big tropical fruit note. Specifically things like passion fruit, guava, peach, those kind of flavors. This doesn't really have any of that, which I'm a little bit disappointed about, but it fulfills that void, or it fills that void, I should say, with this weight and this texture I don't know if the distillation is slightly different. This was distilled on the 17th of February, 2003. Um, so this video will come up maybe two weeks after it was originally distilled in terms of just the day and the date. Not that that's important, but the weight of the product and that oiliness, you would almost think it's some sort of bizarre Brooklady experiment with unpeated stock because it just is so heavy and so dense. The finish is the bit, as I said before, where you can pick out that it's kind of a Glengarry. Those earthy, nutty, oily notes. Hazelnut specifically, guys. Like Between Glengarry and Laphroaig, the hazelnuttiness is off the scale. The chocolate thing is gone. What is replaced is this slight bitterness that reminds me very much of something like Campari or kind of just like a bitter orange like aperitif sort of thing. I find that's actually quite cleansing through the weight and the, the thickness of the liquid. It really complements that kind of dry nuttiness too. And then as you pull through towards the end, it moves into this very herbal style, uh, which is what I associate with Balblair, it's Glengarry, it's Klein Leash, it's been Brewers and Old Pulteneys and even things like Darwinies and Blair Athols, they always have this kind of herbal element to them. It just seems to be a bit intrinsic to Highland whiskey, despite that umbrella phrase being particularly large when you think about how many distilleries are in the Highlands of Scotland. <clears throat> but it, it works in a way which is so balanced and cleansing and rewarding. Um, you know, it's, it's a very rewarding glass of whiskey, this. You kind of taste everything. Uh, this is obviously a bigger score than the Glenlossie. Uh, like this gets an easy nine for me. 
Um, I'm really gutted those passion fruit tropical notes out there because those are some of my favourite things in whiskey. But even with that, it's a pretty outstanding bottle. Um, I believe, again, unfortunately, I'm, I'm sorry that it is sold out. Um, but this came at a price of about £120. And I'll be honest with you, I've tried some single casts that are 120 quid, and they are not worth most people's time a day. Um, this one is. And if you do find some old Glengarry kicking around at cash strength, if you get the ability to try it, fantastic. Um, if not, it is one of the only things I would say that you should take a punt on, because I've never been disappointed with a cask strength old Glengarry. It's always been very, very rewarding. But thank you all for watching. Um, we should have some more kind of consistent reviews coming up in the next couple of weeks. Less single cast stuff. There is one more single cask I need to do. Um, again, because I bought it in October 2023, whilst I was on holiday. Um, and it's one of the more, another favourite distillery, but finished in a very unusual cask. But we should have more consistent stuff. There's going to be more miniature reviews, of course. Um, but I'm trying to get some just regular bottles as well. But thank you all for bearing with me. Um, thank you all for watching. And again, as I said in last week's video, if you have any SMWS recommendation, like focus points for me that I should look out for, um, let me know. Uh, if you have any other single cast bottler recommendations that you'd recommend. I know of all the big ones, but if, if there are any cool smaller ones kicking around, because Charlton Whiskey is very good. Whiskey Sponge, I've tried some of their stuff and it is good, but it is expensive, I think, for what you pay. Um, but yeah, just let me know below. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.